Hello Nidorinas and Nidorinos and welcome to Heart Home City where the Bell and the Angels are challenging the Heart Home Haunts. The Angels are going to start out with Carbink and Weezing, whereas the Haunts are about to start out with Decidueye, who is making its debut in the Elite Challenge League, and Driftblim. Heart Home Haunts have been recently gotten back on the winning board, which they desperately needed, whereas the Battle of the Angels have that three game win streak. Let us know in the comments below who you think is going to win the Hard Home Haunts or the Battle of the Angels. Driftloom is going to start out with that Flame Wheel. And it's going to target Carbink, who has those unbelievable defenses of 150 for defense and special defense. Decidueye now is going to go with that Noble Roar, looking to lower the stats of the opposing team. And it targets Galarian Weezing. Weezing's special attack being lowered. Weezy now coming in with that neutralizing gas so it suppresses all abilities. Goes with the rest, the roost, sorry, but not necessary because it's already got full HP. We get a searing shot coming from Carbink. Hits everybody on the field for a Pokemon with such low attack, but sadly it's left Weezy with a burn. It's also left Driftblim with that burn, so Driftblim and Weezy will be taking damage in between turns. Decidueye being the only one not to get the burn, although being weak. Two fire type attacks being the ghost grass typing. As always, six on six metronome battle. If we hit that 20 minute timing limit, we will go into single battle overtime. Get a gravity now coming from Driftblim, who's actually only going to affect itself. So it lowers itself from the sky, making it susceptible to ground type moves. Get a fury attack now coming from Decidueye. It's going to go for Weezy multiple turns at times in this turn. Hits three. Gets the critical hit on the third. Gets a fourth one in, and gets all five. Very impressive there by Decidueye to get all five Fury attacks in. Weezing with an opportunity to respond. It's going to go with Double Edge, but it will not affect the Hard Home Horns being immune to all normal and fighting type attacks. And we're going to get a dig from Carbon, which could actually hit Driftbloom now thanks to that gravity. That burn's going to continue to do more damage to Weezing and Driftbloom. Heart Home Horns having very impressively won last week when they challenged the Four Tree Flyers. So they finished their three game winning streak. Wonder if they can finish the three game winning streak of the Battle of the Angels or if the Battle of the Angels can get four in a row, which should also be unbelievably impressive. Decidueye is going to go with a double team. It's going to boost its basicness. The Battle of the Angels are currently sitting in sixth. The Heart Home Horns are currently sitting in seventh. So both teams are hoping to climb up further in the 8. Get a Leaf Tornado now coming from Weezing. Goes for Decidueye, so it's not going to be very effective on the Grass typing. But it will lower Decidueye's accuracy. And that Dig now is going to hit Decidueye. It's not going to be very effective, but it will take it down into the yellow. That Burn continuing to chip away at Weezing and Driftblim. Decidueye coming on with those, that 107 base attack. As well as having 100 special attack and special defense. Very well rounded there. Acid Spray now coming from Driftblim. He's got that 80 base speed. So this is the quickest Pokemon on the field and it goes for Weezing. So Weezing's special defense will be lowered. Decidueye now with an opportunity to finish Weezing off. And it's going to go with an extra sensory. But instead targets Carbink who is still standing quite strong on the field. Weezing, you have to think, is not going to survive this next burn, but it's going to go with the Giga Impact, which again will not affect the Ghost types. Those immunities are going to help them greatly throughout the entire season. We get a Fling now coming from Carbink. And it targets Decidueye. It doesn't do a great deal of damage, even though it's super effective. That's where Carbink's 50 base attack and special attack are of great disservice to it, so it's mostly defensive, and Weezing holds on just from that burn, so Driftbloom and Decidueye have an opportunity now to finish off Weezing. You have to think they're going to want to target it. I'm going to get a Cotton Spore. So it's not going to be offensive, it's just going to lower the speed of the opposing team. Weezing's got that 120 base defense, but you have to think it's not going to help it now that it's only got that little bit of HP left. Decidueye can finish it off and it goes with an Acid. And it targets both opposing Pokemon, and this will finish Weezing off, so Weezing has been eliminated by Decidueye. So that neutralizing gas has now worn off, now that Weezing has left the field. And we're going to get a Bolt Beat coming from Carbink. It targets 
Driftblim, but it doesn't. Instead, going for Decidueye would have been super effective on Driftblim, but it's not very effective on Decidueye. Third Pokemon now coming out for the Bell and the Angels. And it's Grimmsnarl. Dark Fairy type. Grimmsnarl having that 120 base attack, so it can hit very powerfully. And it's going to go with Poltergeist. So Decidueye is going to be attacked by its own Leperberry. And big damage, and Decidueye has been eliminated by the super effective move. Decidueye has been and gone from its first Elite Challenge League battle. Driftblim with an opportunity to respond, and it's going to go with a Power Trip. So barely does any noticeable damage to Carving, barely leaving a scratch. Carving shakes it off, now with an opportunity to respond, goes with Focus Energy. So Carving's just going to be getting pumped. Driftblim's still suffering from that burn. You have to think that clock is ticking on Driftblim. Poltergeist now comes out for the Heart Home Haunts just after we saw a Poltergeist from Grimmsnarl. Poltergeist surprisingly has 134 special attack. So it's quite deceptive when it comes to that. And it goes with a string shot now coming from Grimmsnarl, so it's looking to lower the speed of the opposing team. Poltergeist also has that 114 special defense. So a very specially orientated Pokemon is Poltergeist. Driftblim now going with a Leaf Storm. You have to think it wants to target Carbing. It would be super effective, but instead goes for Grimmsnarl. And a very big hit onto Grimmsnarl, that is. Taking it all the way down into the yellow. But it will love Driftblim's special attack. Poltergeist. Now he's going to go with a Lunar Dance. And Poltergeist is going to eliminate itself from the battle. What a foolish move. This will be of no benefit whatsoever to the Heart Home Haunts. But instead gives the advantage to the Bell and the Angels. So there's the second Pokemon eliminated from the Heart Home Haunts. And it was done by itself, sadly. That Ember hits Driftblim as well as suffering from the burn. We're going to have the fourth Pokemon now coming up for the Heart Home Haunts. And it's Dragapult. A very impressive showing so far this season. Whenever it appears in battles, Dragapult with that highest speed in the Elite Challenge League of 142. It's going to want to take advantage. It has that attack of 120 and special attack of 100. Grimstone was going first though. But goes with a Cross Chop. So it's not going to hit as it doesn't affect Dragapult. Dragapult looking to respond. Goes with a Water Shuriken. Signature move of the immensely popular Greninja who is not eligible to be drafted in the Elite Challenge League at this stage. Drift Bloom now goes with a Heat Crash. And targets Carving. They continue to chip away at the very defensive Pokemon. Carving now with an opportunity to respond. And we're going to see a Crush Claw, but again, it does not affect the Heart Home Haunts. Those immunities are a big benefit to the Ghost types. Grim Style. Grim Style, still the quickest Pokemon on the field. It's going to go with a Rock Blast. If it targets Drifloom, and it does. And it finishes it off. Drifloom has been eliminated with that Rock Blast. That is now three down for the Heart Home Haunts. Only one down for the Battle and the Angels. Dragapult needs to do something big. And it's going to go with an Aromatherapy, so it's not going to do anything offensive. And sadly, the Aromatherapy does fail. We get a present now coming from Carbon, but again, it does not affect. Again, those normal type moves are not going to help the Bell and the Angels whatsoever, nor are the fighting types. Gorgeist, in its super form, comes out for the Heart Home Haunts with that 100 attack, 122 defense. Grass Ghost type, and we're getting a Roar Veil, but sadly, it fails from Grimmsnarl. Dragapult now. Gonna go with the darkest Lariat. And it goes for Carby. Not very effective, that clothesline. Very hard hitting Lariat. And now we get a Sky Attack coming from Gorgas. So Gorgas, this Sky Attack is gonna hit in the next turn. Carbink. Doing very well. Those defenses are helping its team greatly. It's gonna go with a Lands Rat. Very impressive. It's going to hit both opposing Pokemon. It's not very effective on Gorgast and does a critical hit to Dragapult. It actually does a critical hit to both, which is saying something. That metronome now being disabled for Carbig thanks to Dragapult's cursed body. Grimmsnarl still being the quickest on the field. 
This is what happens when stats change, and a Giga Impact again does not affect the Hard Home Haunt. Surprisingly, all these moves not affecting the Haunts, and yet they are still down. It's three Pokemon. We get a Frost Breath now, coming from Dragapult. And it finishes off Karbik with the critical hit. Karbik has finally been taken out of this battle after staying in it for about 10 minutes. And that Sky Attack now is going to come for Grimmsnarl. And that eliminates Grimmsnarl. Unbelievable. Just like that, the Hard Home Haunts are back in this battle. It is now a 3 vs 3 battle. Very impressive there by the Hard Home Haunts, Gorgeist and Dragapult. We have Togekiss now. Coming out for the Bell and the Angels, the number one ranked Pokemon on that team. And Hatterene also coming out for the Angels. Togekiss is coming on with 120 special attack and 115 special defense. Hatterene coming on with 136 special attack and 103 special defense. The Bell and the Angels being a very specially based team. And we get a Poison Sting from Dragapult. So it is super effective on Hatterene, but it doesn't leave it with that poison. Togekiss now is going to go with a Snipe Shot. So we've seen a Water Shuriken and a Snipe Shot in this battle. And it goes for Gorgeist. Not very effective, but still does a decent amount of damage. Gorgeist now is going to go with a Jaw Lock. And it's responding to Togekiss, so neither Pokemon will be able to leave the field. Hatterene now. It's going to go with a Flail. And another move not affecting the Heart Home Haunts. How many times is this going to happen? Valley Angels need something better from the Metronome. Dragapult, back as being the fastest Pokemon on the field. It's going to go with a Glare. It's going to leave Hatterene par paralyzed. So if Hatterene suffers from that paralysis, it will not be able to use its Metronome on any of the turns. I'm going to get a Skull Bash from Togekiss. This move will boost Togekiss' defense and would usually hit in the next turn, but again, it does not affect the Heart Home Horns. Probably getting repetitive, but this is just what happens. We get a Lust of Persia now from Gorgeist. And again, it continues to target Togekiss. Not a great deal of damage. Togekiss is standing strong. Hatterene does suffer from that paralysis, so it's not going to be able to use its metronome. Carrot, Capult, we're going to take advantage of all these moves not hitting them. It goes with a Prismatic Laser. And it goes for Hatterene. Almost gets it down into the yellow considering it's not very effective and that skull bash as i said before is not going to hit the ghost types cool guys now it goes with a shell side arm it should be super effective you'll have to think it goes for hatterene and it finishes hatterene off so hatterene has been eliminated by the shell side arm from cool guys very impressive hit and the heart home horns have just taken the lead final pokemon now coming out for the valley angels and it's primarina Water Fairy starter type Pokemon. Trainers in the Alola region receive Primarina as an option for their starter type. Get a Vacuum Wave, and again, another move not affecting the Hard Home Haunts. Primarina. It's going to go with the Dragon Darts, which is actually the move of Dragapult. It's going to hit both opposing Pokemon. This super effective on Dragapult. If that had eliminated Dragapult, how insulting would that have been? For the dragon ghost type. Get an infestation now coming from Gorgeist. Going for Togekiss. Not very effective, but it will continue to do damage in between turns. Actually does a great deal more damage than what it did when it was first used. Very impressive showing so far by Dragapult and Gorgeist. Having taken the lead back for the Heart Home Horns. Now get a defog from Dragapult. So this will lower Togekiss' evasiveness. Togekiss gets to go next. And it's going to go with a power trick. So it will switch its attack and defense stats. That attack of 50 and defense of 95 now being switched around. We get a body slam from Primarina, which again, as I've said, does not affect the ghost types. We get a Sing coming and Primarina avoids the attack. That infestation taking Togekiss down into the yellow. So Togekiss is on a ticking clock. Which means they're going to have to do a great deal of damage to Dragapult and Gorgeist in the meantime. Otherwise Primarina is going to be out there by itself against three Pokemon. That Defender Order is going to boost the defense stats of Dragapult. 
Hard Home Haunts continuing to build momentum, it seems, if they continue to perform this way in the battle. But we're going to get a Fusion Bolt now, coming from Togekiss. Seeing a number of legendary signature moves throughout this battle. It's not going to be very effective on Gorgeist, though, having that Grass type in. Primarian is going to go with a Meteor Mash. And that's going to target Gorgeist, and that does more damage. Gorgeist with an opportunity to respond, however. And it's going to go with a Charge Beam if it hits Primarina. Actually, if it hits either, it's going to be super effective. And it is super effective for Togekiss, but it doesn't do as much damage as you would think. But that infestation continues to eat away at Togekiss, taking it down into the red. But as I was saying, Heart Home Haunts are building momentum. It looks like they've got the advantage in this battle, and they just took down one of the best teams last week. So if they can win this, this could put them up potentially in the top 5 or 4. Dragon Bolt goes with the Leaf Blade, and that'll finish Togekiss off. Not very effective, but it gets that critical hit in. So Primarina is the last Pokemon now for the Battle of the Angels. It needs to pull something out. Let's see if that special attack can do something. But instead it goes with a Roost Primarina's HP already being full, so it's of no help. Now we get a Bone Rush coming from Gorgas. Primarina does avoid the attack. So we have just Primarina left, and we have Dragapult, Gorgas, and the sixth Pokemon remaining for the Heart Home Haunts. Spikes being thrown by Dragapult are going to be of no help to the Hard Home Haunts as no one else will be coming under the field for the Battle of the Angels. Primarina now is going to go with Aaliyah, so it's only going to proceed to lower the stats of the Hard Home Haunts. Lowering the defense stats of both Gorgeist and Dragapult. We see a bug bite now coming from Gorgeist. So they're going to start chipping away at Primarina. Not very effective, so this is the opportunity for Primarina to respond. And it needs to pull something out. Both Gorgeist and Dragapult are down in the yellow. Primarina is still in the green, and there's our three minute warning. If Primarina, Primarina can hold on, having just avoided the Dragon type move, which doesn't affect the Fairy types. But now it's doing moves that don't affect the Heart Home Horns. But if we can hold on for three minutes, we're going to get an Aurora Beam from Gorgas. It can potentially take this down to a one-on-one -on -one battle. Even if there are still three Pokemon remaining on the Heart Home Horns. Which will give Primarina at least a chance where it won't be taking two moves a turn. Dragapult now. Heart Home Horns are definitely going to want to prevent going into overtime. They're going to want those four points for a win. Dragapult's evasiveness will be raised by that Minimize. I'm getting overheat now, and Dragapult avoids the move, whereas it would have been super effective on Gorgeist. Gorgeist going with the Hex. And again, they just continue to chip away at Primarina. Still in the green, but there's our two minute warning now. So this is exactly what Primarina needs, it's holding on. It wants that one on one battle. Get a burning jealousy from Dragapult. This won't be very effective on Primarina's water typing. Only just taking it down into the yellow Primarina now with a chance. If it can take down one of the opponents and then go into overtime, but instead goes with a slash. Another move not affecting the Heart Home Haunts. Unbelievable. And we get a sheer cold. This is a one hit carry move. And it's actually going to connect. Primarina has been eliminated with a one hit KO. Those moves do not hit very often. So unbelievable there by Gorgeist, preventing this battle from going into overtime, which is exactly what the Hard Home Horns had to do. As Battle of the Angels were desperately trying to hold on to the end of that. So we'll see. The Hard Home Horns now with three wins and two losses for the season. They're gonna to want to build on this as all their wins have been very impressive against very impressive teams. The next week they go to Trevita to take on the Trevita Cascade, so they're gonna to want to continue that momentum. Whereas the Bell and the Angels, having just had their three-game winning streak come to an end, thanks to the Heart Home Horns, we've now done that to two teams. Bell and the Angels next week will be hosting the Olive Iron Ore. So they're going to want to try and get back on that winning board as they will be hovering around the red line to stay in the top eight. That was very impressive. Unbelievable how many moves were done to the Heart Home Horns that didn't affect them. Whereas I can only recall one Dragon-type move trying to be done to the Bell and the Angels with the Bell and the Angels 
or the fairy type in not being affected by dragon type moves. But once Dragapult and Gorgias got on the field, very impressive showing. They were down and they took they were down three Pokemon to one, but they eliminated all the remaining five of the Bell and the Angels. So very impressive, especially that one hit KO. But as always, the Nidorinos, the Nidorinos, thank you so much for watching. Let us know in the comments below who you thought was best on field. And always remember, you are awesome, and I will speak to you next time.